time for some truth on this YouTube channel. When it comes to the Beatles, there seems to be only one old song and dance. Everyone is brown nosing them. Even their de facto cover band is rumored to be one of the biggest acts of the 20th century, still appearing in music publications around the world as if they had been relevant in anything after 1995. Hello, Top Hatters! This is Simon Mas, a guy with a degree in composition and musicology and a gift for oversimplification that might result in a punch on the nose from a wild Gallagher. Call it jealousy. Call it madness. When I hear the G word thrown around like that, I start feeling an itch that needs to be scratched. Chuck Parade. The song on the fifth step of this podium is Every Little Thing. The song probably suffers from the state the Beatles were in when it was written and recorded. 1964 had been a long, long, long year, and by the time the Fabs reconvened in Abbey Road to record Beatles for sale, they could have used a holiday. Every Little Thing has something going for it. George Harrison offers some interesting melodies. The piano is used sparingly and with gusto. Ringo's timpanis give a bit of drama in an otherwise placid song that feels like the filler it is. Because it feels a bit too dead to me. Too much glossy, too much this is another great pop song by the Beatles, aren't they fab? This is not to say that other, more memorable Beatles songs are less glossy, but the best numbers give you a certain kick in the pants that this offering lacks. Number 4. Not a second time. There's nothing really wrong with this song. In fact, I'd go on record saying that if it wasn't on a Beatles record, it would just be another bland filler in some band repertoire. But since it is on a Beatles record, it suffers a lot by comparison. The whole thing sounds like an exercise written on a bus to yet another concert. The lyrics are a bit too cliché. The harmonic progression is straightforward. The melody doesn't offer that many variations. The arrangement is barebone and unimaginative. Even the piano solo basically repeats the verse melody. Not worth listening to a second time, indeed. Number 3. Only a Northern Song Whoo, we now start smelling some real air pollution! Poor old George, though, is not entirely to blame. OK, the song, reduced to its barest core, is not something you would write home about, but it's not that bad. And, to be fair, this was never meant to be a serious effort. It was just a bittersweet snarl at the fact that George Harrison received a pittance from Northern Songs for his songwriting efforts. Wait, what's the beef here? Well, the Beatles were already given a substandard publishing contract by Dick James. Northern Songs didn't pay them much, but then the company was floated on the stock market in 1965. The distribution of the shares of Northern Songs became such that John and Paul made sensibly more money than George, even from Harrison's numbers. Only a Northern Song was the first hint that something was not right within the band. But this is no while my guitar gently weeps. As I said, the song wasn't incredible to begin with, but its production only made it much worse. True, this was that point in 1967 when the Fab seemed to drop LSD with a gusto Maggie Thatcher had for snatching bottles of milk from poor kids. But too much was too much. Listen to the song and tell me if it doesn't sound like a very poor early Pink Floyd outtake. The mixing is atrocious. The splashes of calming and going overdubs are chaotic, confused and unfun. You can spot the trumpet sound Paul was so crazy about in early 1967, and what I call the splashes of overdubs is probably John having fun with sound in the same way he did with the radio set in I Am The Warrus. But it just doesn't work here, and I doubt 
Harrison had much input, to be honest. If it had stayed in a vault, only a northern sun might be classed as a failed experiment. Issued as it was in 1965 for the Yellow Submarine soundtrack, the song feels like a sabotage on George Harrison, who, by that time, had grown a lot as a songwriter. Number 2. Maxwell Silver Hammer <laughs> Boy, this was daft. Paul McCartney taught and maintained for years that he was proud to have put the word pataphysical in a pop song. Perhaps it is genius and I don't get it. But coming from the man who wrote Penny Lane yesterday, you never give me your money and much, much more, this song doesn't sit well with me at all. Look, I'm old and stuff, so I might be misremembering this, but I have this distinct memory of watching the Beatles performing the song well before the Get Back documentary came out in 2021, with Mal Evans banging on the anvil with the hammer. Mal was the only person in the room with a smile on his face. Everyone else had this expression like, why was I even born if it came to this? And this is more or less what I feel about the song. Oh sure, it's meant to be smart, a funny way to talk about a made-up serial killer, a way to prove that you can sing about anything in a pop song. But no. But this is not the worst moment of the Beatles recording career. That dishonor in my book is reserved for another song. Why don't we do it in the road? Oh, sweet baby Jesus, why, Paul? Why? <sighs> There's another song on the White Album that I detest as much as this, but why don't we do it in the road? Gets the prize and the number one spot on this shit parade because it is what it is. Kaka, a song inspired by two monkeys going at it on an Indian road. It is a throwaway that sounds like a throwaway. Minimal effort all the way through. Even the lyrics are a little more than just a title. There is literally nothing positive I can say about this number, save from the fact that its existence vindicates countless unhappy composers. If this song has a place on a published album, then anything, anything else, needs to be treated with at least some respect. <sighs> Having got that out of my system, it's time to close this video. Of course, you will want to start a flame war in the comments section. Go on then. Tell me which Beatles songs you can stand and why. Let's have a friendly, made up, fun fight about it. See you soon for more music related content. Stay cool and keep your top hat on. Bye! Simon Mas, music you love!